meeting of the uh, Planning Commission uh, for uh, May 23rd, 2017 to order. Uh, first order of business will be to approve the agenda, but before we do that, uh, Sonny, I'd like for you to introduce Robert. And we have you know, a new mind. member on the board tonight, Robert Walker. He, he's replacing uh, Cheryl Dean, who passed away, and Robert has agreed to sit on the board, so he will be one of the members from now on. Glad to have you on the board. Thank you, Brett. <clears throat> All right. Um, you want to look over um, that information? We'll go ahead and um, get a motion to approve the agenda. Okay. You have a motion to approve the agenda. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Next order of business is to adopt the meetings from the previous meeting. Adopt the minutes from the previous meeting. Do a chance to read over that at this meeting? I have a motion to approve. I will second since Mr. Walker wasn't here. Um, all in favor? Uh, adopting the minutes, say aye. Aye. So the next order of business is to hear a request to annex parcel 104-1-053, uh, which is 2.34 acres into the city of Jasper as C2 General Commercial, which is uh, located at 1860 Highway 53 uh, West in Jasper. And at this time, so I'd like you to go ahead and um, tell us what you got. Give us some explanation, please. All right. Um, the CSC properties is <clears throat> going to buy this property. They're, they're requesting the annexation, and you have in your uh, packet the permission of uh, Mr. Gary Copeland and Ms. Uh, Rowland <coughs> for them to do that. So the annexation will be for CSC and its party. I keep referring to it as the old Pepsi property, which it is the old Pepsi building. A lot of people are young and don't know what that is. So you know where that was? It is at, uh, as it said, it's at 1860 Highway 53 West, where you turn in and go to Kroger and Home Depot and all that up in there. This is, uh, if anyone would like to see it, this is the building layout property that they will be, be purchasing uh, off of this 2.34 acres. Right here if you need to see that. So that's where we are if you want to. Uh, May I take a look, sir? Yes. This is 53 right here. Okay. 
If you'll give us a second, we'll open the floor for discussion. Sure, I apologize. Yeah, I just okay. wanted to discuss. Thank you. Right. Questions? Yeah. Can we anything, Robert? No. I've got just a couple of questions, if, if it's okay. Um, the location of the property, um, I would guess that you're representing the engineering company? Or I am, yes, sir. Um, I guess my question would be um, ingress, egress type stuff. Where, you know, what's the plan for, you know, getting traffic in and out of there? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, as you can see, we're using the existing curb cuts. Um, I'm Connor Patton with Foresight Green, by the way. I'm representing CSC Properties, okay. a civil engineer uh, consultant. Uh, we'll be using the existing driveway curb cut on Highway 53 and the extension of Camp Creek, or sorry, Camp Road. Um, you know, those are our plans to use those. We've been in contact with George DOT on, um, you know, turn lanes in the site. They're going to require a left turn lane into our site off Highway 53, as well as a decel lane um, off of uh, Highway 53 as well. So that left turn lane in will help kind of, you know, not have uh, patent bills stacking up on uh, on Highway 53 blocking people from going straight. So I think that'll definitely help damper the, the traffic issue if, if there were to become one because of people turning onto the site. There should still be an entrance in from uh, the Kroger parking lot that road? Uh, from, camp, from the extension of Camp, Re or camp Road, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, sir, there will be. So where the driveway is now, it's a very wide driveway. We, we, um, Probably narrowing that down, um, and that'll be our we'll keep that entrance point. Uh, these are both two way, both entrance and exits. Um, the site kind of circulates through the front half as a two way uh, driveway, but around the back it'll be a one way. You know, counterclockwise rotation throughout the site to help the circulation. <coughs> okay. Um, any folks like to speak and we'll no, sir. No? Okay. You have the floor. Thank you so kindly. <coughs> um, I'm sorry, what was your name, sir? Connor Patton. Okay, Mr. Patton. Um, so, so my, my question uh, for you all and Mr. Patton is, uh, there's been existing businesses here at this intersection uh, that have been here over a decade. The Wendy's has been here 15 years. The Bojangles has been here 12 years. We've been asking for a diesel lane or even just a turn lane for many, many years and it's never been granted for us. As a matter of fact, when you turn left into Bojangles off of Highway 53, where Chevron and Bojangles are, there is no left-hand turn lane. And so because of this, you have to create your own, and it's very dangerous. Furthermore, from Camp Road, when I built 12 years ago, I was told to put in a turn lane that would access for a right-hand turn on 253. Unfortunately, that turn lane has been a right-hand turn lane to nowhere. It has never been approved to be accessible to Highway 53. The problem that this has uh, also um, created is a major backup of traffic onto Camp Road, which we have been waiting to be widened for quite some time. And also, we don't have a right turn lane in to Bojangles off of Camp Road. We've expressed this need for about four years now. Last year, I had a great meeting with Mayor Weaver. We sat out on that corner, we stood actually, out on the corner, and, uh, and we, we watched the traffic and the problems and the congestion. And, uh, and he, he, he agreed that we needed SPLOS to pass before we could address the congestion concerns. And as we all know, SPLOS did, did pass. My concern is, is that we're already overly congested at this intersection. In fact, if you look at my neighbor, uh, Mr. Paul Rambler, who owns 57 Wendy's, who could not be here tonight because he was in Cherokee, North Carolina. He will be at the city council meeting. But he's very disheartened to think that he's yet to have any access to Highway 53 and yet he's been there for 15 years. As a matter of fact, he was only allowed an exit only access onto 53, approximately right across from where you are proposing to put both an ingress and an egress, two-way traffic. 
Furthermore, I have video footage that I've been taking just in the last month so that I could show you not only has the congestion been there for over a decade, but especially it's been exasperated in the past six months. Furthermore, Popeyes, on average, produces how many cars per day, sir? Um, one second. From general um, ITE code, if you look up the use for a drive through roughly, you know, 700. Correct. So uh, in a month, we're talking about 21,000 additional cars that would be coming through that intersection, correct? Half of which are already through traffic um, uses, so people that are already using, you know, on Highway 53 passing through the site. Right, so they may not, but they may not be stopping. Correct, they would be stopping, but they so. would be passing through on Highway 53, so it's usually half and half. Okay, as I far don't know where you may get that groups. number from, but 21,000 cars of additional traffic going through, going through that intersection. I assure you will pose a major problem and a threat to our citizens here in Jasper who have already complained at great lengths, who are already creating their own left-hand turn lanes because we haven't been able to get that approved, who are already complaining because they have one shared entrance into Wendy's and can't get anything else approved, and again have been operating in this city and in this county for over a decade. Um, I, I love this county, I live in this county. Um, and uh, I would love to be able to have the access uh, that Mr. Patton here is proposing for a new business. I would love to have those privileges. And please, please mind you, uh, the Copelands and the Rollins are good friends of mine, and I have the utmost respect for them, uh, especially for them as businessmen, and uh, Gary is a good, good mentor to me. But I know it would be remiss of me not to fight this battle when it can so adversely affect my sales, uh, the people of Jasper, the sales of our neighbor, and I assure you that our same store sales would be affected drastically in a negative impact. Uh, I urge you that we need to fix the current issues that we currently have and move that forward before we add any additional congestion. And I uh, also uh, remind you all that I've been meeting and discussing this with Mayor Weaver for years. This is nothing new about Bojangles upset that Popeyes is coming. This is something that I've been <coughs> voicing about for a long time. But now there's a sudden influx of traffic. And at this point, I really can be no longer patient. We really need a solution. Whether Popeyes comes and this gets approved or not, we do need a solution. Thank you. Thank you. Would we need? Um, sure. Quick second. <coughs> um, in the numbers, absolutely yes. Um, you know, the access on Highway 53 is obviously at Georgia State Road. GDOT, um, you know, jurisdictional road. We've been in talks with uh, GDOT about, you know, the appropriate access we need to have on Highway 53 to make the site work. Um, you know, they want us to use that existing driveway on Highway 53, which has been there for um, years and years, um, probably before Bojangles was ever um, on Highway 53. Uh, I want to let you know that the numbers as far as traffic, you know, 700 cars might sound like a lot of cars to most people, um, but you know during our peak hour we're looking at you know roughly 46 to 50 cars, so that's roughly you know less than one car a minute. Um, you know it's, it's excuse it's, me, Mr. Pack, how many hours are you open? Um, I, I the usual boat angles hours are 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. or later up to 1 a.m. So. Right. So Popeyes is only open 12 hours and. And uh, you're saying in your peak it's only 50 cars an hour? The peak ITE. The peak ITE for cars um, for new created, new generated trips, not fast by trips. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at cars that are going out of their way to go, you know, add to this congestion issue, and you know that normally wouldn't be passing by Highway 53, the normal peak hour for a PM, uh, you know, for PM trips is roughly you know 44 cars per hour in the Lush. peak hour. I so it's the most you know. Adding zero cars though, we've already got a major congestion issue mm -hmm. and if the uh, and if the council would care to look at the videos, I'll be more than happy to provide those an email and copy you as well. It's already an existing problem and I made sure that I videoed it at your peak hours mm -hmm. based off of the website for Popeyes so that you could actually see where we currently are and then how in the world would the city of Jasper handle any additional congestion. Uh, all your respect, I really appreciate the points. Um, you know, we're looking at an intersection with, you know, the Kroger and the Home Depot right behind it. You know, and the out parcels all combined, roughly 200,000 square feet. Um, 
you know, of, of commercial use, and we're proposing, um, you know, 2,900 square feet. It's about 1.3% 1, 1 of, you know, the commercial square footage that stands to the north of uh, Camp Creek. I'm sorry, Camp Road. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we're more than happy to work with Jasper and, you know, figure out what we need to do, you know, on the plans to, you know, make this work. Um, you know, we're willing to work with Jasper and GDOT as well, you know, to make sure we're doing what we need to do on our site to help handle this problem. I don't think it's a, a problem of this site specifically. I think it's a problem of the existing intersection and, you know, the existing traffic numbers. Obviously, it's already an issue and, um, you know, there's no there's no Popeyes or anything on that parcel right now that's creating much traffic. Um, so I think it's, it's a greater issue than the parcel itself. And annexing this parcel, I don't think, you know, creates a much larger <coughs> issue in the grand scheme of things. Um, I would ask, is, G, is GDOT aware, not only that it's, you know, just being looked at being annexed in as a C2, but also that the use is a drive-through? Yes, they are aware. Because we've spoken to GDOT on several occasions um, at the persuasiveness of, of Mayor Weaver, and as has uh, Mr. Rambler, um, looking to, when he did his remodel, to be able to help with the flow of traffic into Wendy's, and we've had no success. I can give you some contacts that you got if you'd like that. I'd... Well, surely if they'll allow it for you, then they would allow it for us, so perhaps if, if you do, uh, uh, you know, if you're successful, perhaps that will prove to be beneficial for all of us. Um, along Camp Road, I mean, I, I, I don't believe, I think that is a city road? No, not Camp, 53. Okay, 53, okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they do try to limit the access points once it gets to a certain point, uh, from what I've seen. Right. Uh, they do like right Decel lanes, and you know they they really do like adding those on the site. So um, I'm not sure who you've been talking to, but I can I would gladly use some some contacts. You guys can help you out. Um, you guys, we usually reach out to when we're doing developments. I just uh, hope that we sure. wouldn't be denied if they were approved, because again, there's only so many access points allowed, and mm -hmm. we've been asking for years. Mm -hmm. You guys had a conversation with the state DOT about the. I have not, but uh, as as Patton said. This is a, a state, Georgia State Highway. GDOT is, is in charge of Highway 53. Of course, they're not for the Camp Road. And if there is a problem caused by this development of this one corner, I feel sure that the GDOT will look at it, excuse me, and, <clears throat> and put the appropriate turning lanes in. I've got a concern also. Okay. And I, my name is Roger Street. And I actually work for Mojang's, but I also live in Hill City. From 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock in the afternoon, you cannot even take camp road. I go all the way down past Home Depot and turn left to go home that way because it's so congested that you cannot make that left turn now at Kroger's. There's too many cars coming down at one time. I mean, I've sat through three red lights there multiple times because there's so many cars, there's no turn. Lane. So that little turn lane you're talking about, you won't get a single car in there because they can't get in there. What you're going to do is the whole place is going to become congested. No one's going to move. There's going to be multiple accidents. If you stand there, if you, if you go stand there today and watch for a couple hours during busy peak times, there's at least 10, 15 times accidents could occur right now because people don't follow the rules. They run the lights already. They come flying through especially those trucks, big huge semi-trucks and the chicken trucks, they take the little side road too. They cut you off, they almost hit you. The only way you can get over there now is to go down by the floodwood grill and take your chances on sliding down there as quick as you can. There's times that I go, I come from Canton to Jasper, I take Salco Road, the back road all the way up, which is way out of the way, because I know I can't get through there. It's impossible. So unless that road's fixed, this thing you're talking about is not going to work. You're going to have so many accidents, you're going to have people killed right there. What's going to happen? And I have a young daughter who works at Bojangles also. And I fear for her life every day that she drives down that road during the peak times because it is so congested. And if you don't believe me, I'll stand with you today you want to stand. We'll stand right there and watch what happens every single day. It's, it's just a bad location. It's to, not a good to location. To Roger's point, four managers' vehicles have been hit at Bojangles 
You know the parallel parking that is right there next to our sign that borders Highway 53? Four manager cars have been hit in accidents that have occurred at Camp Road in 53. They ruined our landscaping, jumped our curb. Four managers' cars have been hit four different accidents. In addition, I've had their sign repaired on two different occasions. R&R &R Towing uh, did the most recent one for us as far as documenting that. Um, there's been Mr. Rambler's um, retaining wall there at Camp Road in 53 has been hit four times. Those are different accidents. We just happen to have the same numbers. But his retaining wall has been hit on four different occasions. And the accidents that have occurred there have already been horrific. But to think that we would, you know, whether or not he's going to generate, um, you know, cars to that, you know, he says new cars to that area. Well, let's say that that was a car trading out from McDonald's to now to Popeyes. Or let's say they were trading from Burger King to Popeyes. Any, those 700 cars will be coming through that intersection, and I believe it will be more than half. But irregardless, 350 cars would be a hard number for us. At this point, we're already over congested. It, it needs to be three lanes there, it really does. Mm -hmm. I mean, the access to Hill City is ridiculous now. I mean, it's, it's, it's bad. It's so bad that I'm, when I, you know, I probably will sell my house <clears> to <throat> the other side of Jasper because I can't physically get through there. It's not safe. And you're talking about adding more and more vehicles. That turn you're talking about, Kroger, you're not, nobody's going to make a turn. It's going to be so blocked and so congested, it's not going to be possible. And you can go right now and look and see it's not possible. I couldn't come that way just now to come here to this meeting. I don't know how a right diesel lane that close to the intersection would work, other than for people using it to try to get around traffic. <clears throat> yeah, you're going, to create, you're going to create a way for accidents to happen by putting that right they're going to try to sneak out of there by going around Kroger's because you can't get through a lot of Kroger's. Without putting the arrows in, that intersection is not going to work. But there's going to be an enforcement problem, you know, that the police department and the sheriff's department will need to get involved. They could sit there all day. They could write a thousand tickets a day there right now. They definitely could. I guarantee you that. And you're talking about, and most of them are big vehicles that are doing this. <clears throat> and I ride a motorcycle as well, and I have to. I, I just go around. I don't go that way because it's just so dangerous. But if, unless you live over there and you have to come home that way every day, and your family comes home that way every day, you don't worry as much about it because you're over on this side of town. Not to mention, each day about 15 school buses travel through there. They travel on Camp Road, mm -hmm. and uh, and they back up. You know, it takes them three to four lights to try to get through, and they're all trying to turn left there on 53, yeah, head out to the west side of the there. county. Um, and it just blocks, it blocks Wendy's completely. And, uh, and it blocks, you know, our only real entrance that we have on Camp Road. The other one you can't turn left into to show on all those people. Are what was the mayor's conversation with you about? Was what, very, what was he talking about doing? Um, it was positive. Um, he had several plans. Um, one was the house that's located behind us, the brown home, the residential <coughs> home, trying to put a diesel lane uh, uh, there for a right turn into the shared entrance that we have with Trouts and Chevron. Um, he sent me, he gave me the contacts to DOT to look for a left-hand turn lane into Chevron, Trouts, and Bojangles. And, um, and I, I asked if that uh, turn lane that we built over a decade ago in front of Bojangles between us and Wendy's on Camp Road could be connected for an easy right out. And he said all of this takes money time and uh, and and that it just it was we were going to have to be patient but you can imagine my frustration when we have been so patient in phone calls and meetings and letters uh, I've written a, a letter to the City Council I've saved it uh, that was two years ago addressing this concern as well the DOT I'm just asking questions yes, here sir. the DOT indicated to you that if, if the traffic flow were more that they would put that left turn lane behind there between you and Chevron. Is that where you're asking for the left turn line? That, um, that I am, line? that's correct. Yes, sir, yeah. the left end. You know, they indicated that there weren't enough, that there was not a, a high enough traffic count for that? Or was, no, there, sir, was there a reason, specific reason they gave you for not putting it there? It's currently a right turn into Waffle House. So without widening the road, there's no additional room for a left-hand turn. 
Plus, we have to deal with the state right of way up through there. And the GDOT has gotten so much stricter about when you do things that have the <coughs> highway property involved, and what they call a, a Gulf project, I believe it is. And I'm sure the mayor and them have looked into it, but it 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 does take a long time <coughs> to do anything with them now. But if I didn't I didn't realize that the the accidents were as high as you seem to think they are. I know they are so I've witnessed them from the We watch them, we have front row view. And I'm sure the and city could provide us the numbers. The other problem that we have now is that you all are considering the emergency vehicles can't even get out when they come that way. Mm -hmm. When they have to get to the interstate, it's a nightmare for them. If they have to swing around and back if and forth. If there's three or four school buses sitting there, though, maybe they shouldn't, the school buses shouldn't use that road. But they, you can't, how can you deny a school bus the right to use a highway? That's my question, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you were going to do what you're talking about, you should close down that section of the road completely and not allow traffic. You know, um, it was my understanding, but now this is this is strictly from hearing from regulars at Bojangles. Um, but it was my understanding that if that was the safest route for the school buses, even though it's the most congested, <coughs> excuse me, I've got allergies, so that they wouldn't have to cross over 515 and 53, um, you know, a major intersection. And so the idea is that they were, they're coming across down there at QT. And they're crossing there and then coming through Camp Road. But they back up from where Camp Road and 53 are at the intersection in question all the way to Hamacola Electric um, every day. Every day. Multiple at schools in session. Yeah. Depending on as the different schools let out. All right. Anybody? I believe it will speak. I'm Gary Copeland. We do own the property. It's going to be sold regardless if we add exit into the city or not. Everything Crystal said is true. She said all her complaints are justified. It is a little narrow road on the uh, south side of 53. Has nothing to do with us. But she's got major problems. I go in Bojangles just about every day. And I sit out in Camp Road and wait. We on the other side, we have a business there now. We don't have that traffic flow problem. The intersection to Kroger was built just for that. It's, it's plenty wide enough. Uh, we we also uh, designated both lots for uh, ingress and uh, uh, so you can come in either you can come in the Kroger side or you can come in the 53 side. We don't have any traffic problems on that side of the road, but y'all do need to work with Crystal over there. The road's barely big enough for two cars to pass on the south side of 53, but we're not talking about that corner. We're talking about the corner on the other side. So with that. I don't foresee any problems with the traffic. Uh, these boys have worked through that. They've drawn it up nicely so that the traffic can flow through there. But like I said, the Crystal's from Lake the City or the county. We're not sure what camp road belongs to on that side of the road. The mayor and the commissioner are debating now if it belongs to the city or the county and who's going to pave it and who's going to widen it. And uh, she does need some help with DLT if you can help her there. But to our, our part tonight, I don't see a problem. Anybody else? Any other questions? Mr. Walker? Okay. Then uh, I will entertain a motion to uh, either recommend, uh, recommend uh, annexation or deny annexation to the city council. to recommend acceptance and we're going to recommend uh, to the city council or the motion is to recommend to the city council accepting the property into the city of annexation. Okay. Do you understand that Mr. Wall? Yes sir. All right so a motion and I need a second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor of recommendation 
uh, to the City Council for annexation and say aye. Aye. Okay, and I'll do it. Then uh, this meeting is adjourned. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second. We are adjourned. <laughs>